Determines by the verification, the twin pillars of the amoral society. Ο δρόμο προ την αρετή ήταν δύσκολο για τον Ηρακλείο. The history of Phoenix is a troubled one. It is often claimed by the twin pillars of determinism and verification. The first is the belief that all things in the universe, both social and physical, are determined by the laws of God, all of nature, and that humans merely discovered this law. The second refers to the tendency for human beings to forget the subjective human origins of all thoughts, beliefs, theories, and to treat them as if they were objective things, rights, that then have control over all these entities, including humans, to which they refer. For thousands of years, ruling systems of thought have based themselves on these deceptive practices. This has simplified the task of rulers and others who have benefited from these beliefs, as it has relieved them of any personal moral responsibility for their thoughts and actions. But it has also served the common people who, along with the rulers, were relieved from the endless process of constantly examining their ontological beliefs, this being especially true if the actual systems of control in society seem to leave little opportunity to alter the actual circumstances of life in any case. The current situation is depressing, given the widespread absence of any moral awareness in science, especially economic science, during the widespread crisis leaving the Western world, especially destructive to the young people who appear to have so little hope for their future. The immoral society is one with no moral sense, no sense of good versus evil. In its extreme form, it is an expression of sociopathology. Moral institutions, however, distinguish human beings as a species. Today's immoral society is a product of several hundred years of war by the economy against society, as outlined by Karl Polian in his book The Great Transformation. It is a society characterized by a mentality of infinite growth, where money, not a human being, is the measure of all things. Immorality likely originated some 10 to uh, 10,000 years ago with the domestication of plants and animals, creating popula population growth, increasing the size of the community, and a gradual loss of the sense of interdependency. There was a shift from egalitarianism to male dominated hierarchies. Engels attributing this to agriculture and private property, Iceland to the inventions of herders into all Europe. Male dominance brought a loss of resource social conduct. Western religion and its morality resulted in the loss of Greek philosophy and theater and a loss of the dialectic. While offering spiritual comfort, it has often in the past overlooked its own moral code. The church, the church is basically an undemocratic institution and has often been an obstacle to the growth of scientific knowledge. Its corruption in the 16th century led to Protestant schism and a new moral code based on a direct relationship between the individual and God. This led to the growth of individualism and an esoteric sense of morality, which unfortunately, however, may also lead to authoritarianism and rightness. Anthropological research shows that morality is an emotional instinct found in humans and high primates because their survival depends upon it. As a practical matter, all behavior in the group is known. Violators are punished with sunning, exile, sometimes execution, including also alpha males and bullies who are controlled by the egalitarian majority. Nietzsche's will to power is seen by some as natural. His social Darwinism is a misrepresentation of Darwin, who spoke about adaptability, not strength, 
that is used as a justification for economic theory and imperialism. Salvage calls to this the Western illusion of human nature. In Maslow's terms, the will to self-actualization is not a will to dominance, which must be considered a psychological disorder, but a will to self-fulfillment, which is the normal human desire. Anthropologists and Nietzsche distinguish between two types of morality, morality of outcomes or same culture, and morality of intentions or guilt culture. In our complex, Large-scale society will now need a morality of unintended consequences. This is a task for social science and philosophy. But philosophy has been degrading. And social science is too mechanistic. We need the human involved in phenomenology and art, especially the narrative and theater. The culture of science includes not morality. It is based on the five senses and rationality, whereas morality is based upon emotion and some conscious instinct. Politicians and businessmen use both in advertising. Science itself, however, may often be used as sociodramatic propaganda tool for the ruling class. Science has replaced religion as the source of true knowledge, but largely ignores ancient Greek philosophy. It searches for objective laws of nature in a value-free framework that is outside nature and society. Natural laws determine everything irrespective of human volition. Determinism gives great authority to scientists while excusing them from any moral responsibility. Determinism is also comfortable for most people. It relieves them of the need to constantly examine the presuppositions. There is a slow degradation of social fabric. A social program such as education, health and welfare are eroded in a human creating neoliberal ideological system which attempts to privatize all public services as excess capital seeks the investment outlets beyond the pure gathering activities that now characterize its basic non-productive activity. So, is there any hope for the future? Hope for the future can be seen in the thousands of efforts to find new solutions that are hidden from the mass media but can be found on the internet. There are also thousands of scientists, economists, biologists, anthropologists, sociologists, alternative medical scientists, and many others. There are tens of thousands of new small-scale communities organized by people called cultural creatives and described in a book by the same name. Ray and Anderson estimated in the late 1990s that there were 100 million adults in Europe and North America in these communities. Since the 1960s, they and many others are seeking a new social paradigm beyond deterministic science, beyond materialism and predatory individualism, seeking a paradigm based on love, not war. Thank you very much. Yeah,